Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh everyone, Jum'a Mubarak and thank you for tuning in to today's Friday GEMS session. We're going to be having a beautiful uh, session with the recitation of Surat Al-Kaf by uh, Sheikh Abdul Ladib and as well a uh, reflection on Surat Al-Kaf and a Friday lesson by Imam Ahmad Deeb uh, starting shortly inshallah. You have uh, several minutes to share this link with your friends and family. And we also have this flyer posted on our social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. So you can find us there, repost uh, you know, our flyer so more people can come and enjoy this beautiful gathering, inshallah. And the link you can share with your family and friends is celebratemercy.com slash Friday so they can join for this blessed program on this beautiful Jum'ah. If you don't know who we are by now at Celebrate Mercy, uh, our mission is to teach Prophet Muhammad Wasallam's life and character through our words and through our actions to Muslims and friends of other faiths. We do this through our webinars, our social media, our events, our trips, our campaigns. So we do this through our words, which are the first four, and uh, our, our actions, which is, you know, the campaigns that we do. And we started 12 years ago and, you know, through our actions, through the different campaigns, that we've done, we've supported, uh, you know, um, different tragedies, different causes, whether it uh, affected Muslims or our friends of other faiths. And our campaigns have gotten a lot of um, media coverage as well, as we support everyone and try to uh, help everyone through whatever they're going through. And as well, we've had various events, uh, like uh, before COVID, we used to have in-person uh, events and conferences, weekend retreats, but since COVID, we've had this weekly webinar, the Friday Gems webinar that you're watching right now. Every week, we've had this uh, beautiful gathering since the beginning of COVID. And we've also had virtual conferences that, you know, have had tens of thousands of viewers. And, uh, you know, we've also had uh, courses, online courses that you can see here. So we've been very busy uh, since the beginning of COVID, having a lot of online programming free of charge uh, for you all. And we've also started our children's programs. We've had three children's programs so far, uh, and we're only going to continue our programming and extend uh, to all other age groups, uh, everyone who is watching. Uh, you know, we can see uh, the work we've done since COVID, the amount of hours of new content, of courses and webinars and campaigns. Uh, so we've been really working really hard to provide you all with this. Uh, and if you've been uh, enjoying our programming, if you uh, appreciate the work that you are, we are doing, you can consider uh, giving us a one-time donation or becoming a monthly donor by going to celebratemercy.com slash donate. Since we are a nonprofit organization and we do all these events uh, based on your, uh, and because of your donations, mashallah. And I wanted to remind you all as well of our current campaign that we have underway, uh, the prisons campaign, Share the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in prisons. We're at 49% of our goal. So this is a phase three of our program. We uh, print and distribute the book, uh, al Shamal Al-Muhammadiyah, the descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to inmates in prisons. We've just distributed over uh, a thousand and 200 copies so far, and our goal is to distribute another 2,000 copies, uh, hopefully uh, by the end of Rabiul al Awwal, inshallah, uh, with your help and support. And I am in contact with uh, these inmates regularly, so many of them requesting different books, different literatures that we send them, but this is our, you know, specific and special cause to spread the message of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to these inmates in prisons. And as well, I just wanted to let you all know about this 15 month uh, Quranic Arabic journey with Fawake Institute. If you are interested in increasing your Quranic Arabic and learning uh, more about what you are reciting, understanding and connecting with the Quran a lot more deeply, uh, the next uh, you know series of programming is starting in September until December 2023. So it's an over a year long journey and you get a $600 discount if you sign up uh, through Celebrate Mercy, you can see the discount code here. So you go to fawakit.org slash cmercy and use the code cmercy25. And you can find a lot more information when you go on the website as to how the program is structured and so many um, incredible testimonials by people who have gone through these uh, Quranic Arabic trainings and mashallah have uh, gotten a much better relationship with the Quran and a deeper understanding of the Quran through them. Now, uh, as to our programming, uh, we will be reciting uh, Surah Al-Kaf uh, very shortly, but just a reminder as to why we recite Surah Al-Kaf on Fridays. Uh, 
uh, our messenger, uh, um, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, for the person who recites Surat Al-Kaf on Fridays, a light will appear for him from below the throne as high as the skies. This light will help him in the darkness of the day of resurrection. And all the sins which he may have committed from the last Friday until this Friday will be forgiven. So we gather here to recite Surat Al-Kaf together so that our sins may be forgiven and we may all you know, experience and, and uh, see that light on the day of judgment that will erase our sins, inshallah. Uh, before we uh, begin the recitation, don't forget to share the flyer on your social media and to share the link with your friends, since our prophet also said that he who directs others to a good deed is as the one who did it. So simply by sharing the link, celebratemercy.com slash Friday and getting your family and friends to tune into the beautiful recitation of Surat Al-Kaf, the reflection, the Friday lesson, you will reap the rewards and benefits of bringing them to such a gathering, inshallah. So don't forget to share this link, share this flyer, and uh, you know, without further ado, I will introduce our reciter who will be reciting Surat Al-Kaf for us today. So Sheikh Abdul Ladib is an imam and a teacher of the religious sciences since 1982. He graduated from Abu Nur Institute in Damascus, Syria at a young age and currently holds one of the shortest senets, which are the chains of transmission from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the world for teaching Quran. He memorized the Quran at the age of 16 and became a world-renowned Qari at the age of 18. Upon memorizing the Quran, he received his ijazah from Sheikh Muhammad Sokar, who held the highest ijazah in the world before he passed away. Sheikh Abdullah studied under some of the world's most prestigious scholars for over two decades in Syria and has traveled all over the world to share his beautiful recitation and mastery of the Quran. He immigrated to the U.S. with his family in 1999, working as an imam and Quran teacher in various major cities. He is now the senior scholar and co-founder of Itqan Institute and currently resides in Toledo, Ohio with his family, where he devotes his time exclusively to teaching Quran. So we're very blessed to have Sheikh Abdullah Deeb joining us today. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Sheikh Abdullah, you're muted if you could unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Inshallah, Jum'a mubarakah to everyone, inshallah ta'ala. Barakatuh. I'm so glad to see you since uh, since Ramadan. We had the pleasure of seeing you every day, mashallah. So we're really grateful to see you once again. It's it's big honor for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us. Ya Arham al Rahimin. We're going to start, inshallah, reciting Surah Al Kahf. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم <coughs> الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قيما لينذر بأسا شديدا من لدنه ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أجرا حسنا ما كثين فيه أبدا وينذر الذين قالوا اتخذ الله ولدا ما لهم به من علم ولا لآبائهم كبرت كلمة تخرج من أفواههم إن يقولون إلا كذبا فلعلك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا إنا جعلنا ما على الأرض زينة لها لنبلوهم أيهم أحسن عملا وإنا لجاعلون ما عليها صعيدا جوزا 
أم حسبت أن أصحاب الكهف والرقيم كانوا من آياتنا عجبا إذ أوى الفتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا فضربنا على آذانهم في الكهف سنين عددا ثم بعثناهم لنعلم أي الحزبين أحصى لما لبثوا أمدا نحن نقص عليك نبأهم بالحق إنهم فتية آمنوا بربهم وزدناهم هدى وربطنا على قلوبهم إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا شططا هؤلاء قوم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة لولا يأتون عليهم بسلطان بين فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأووا إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقا وترى الشمس إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهد الله فهو المهتد ومن يض فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وتحسبهم أيقاظا وهم رقود ونقلبهم ذات اليمين وذات الشمال وكلبهم باسط ذراعيه بالوصيد لو اطلعت عليهم لوليت منهم فرارا ولملئت منهم رعبا وكذلك بعثناهم ليتساءلوا بينهم قال قائل منهم كم لبثتم قالوا لبثنا يوما أو بعض يوم قالوا ربكم أعلم بما لبثتم فبعثوا أحدكم بورقكم هذه إلى المدينة فلينظر أيها أزكى طعاما فليأتكم برزق منه وليتلطف وليتلطف ولا يشعرن بكم أحدا إنهم إن يظهروا عليكم يرجموكم أو يعيدوكم في ملتهم ولن تفلحوا إذا أبدا وكذلك أعثرنا عليهم ليعلموا أن وعد الله حق وأن الساعة لا ريب فيها إذ يتنازعون بينهم أمرهم 
فَقَالُوا ابْنُوا عَلَيْهِمْ بُنْيَانًا رَبُّهُمْ أَعْلَمُ بِهِمْ قَالَ الَّذِينَ غَلَبُوا عَلَى أَمْرِهِمْ لَنَتَّخِذَنَّ عَلَيْهِمْ مَسْجِدًا سيقولون ثلاثة رابعهم كلبهم ويقولون خمسة سادسهم كلبهم رجما بالغيب ويقولون سبعة وثامنهم كلبهم قل ربي أعلم بعدتهم ما يعلمهم إلا قليل فلا تمار فيهم إلا مراء ظاهرا ولا تستفت فيهم منهم أحدا ولا تقولن لشيء إني فاعل ذلك غدا إلا أن يشاء الله واذكر ربك إذا نسيت وقل عسى أن يهديني ربي لأقرب من هذا رشدا ولبثوا في كهفهم ثلاثمائة سنين وازدادوا تسعا قل الله أعلم بما لبثوا له غيب السماوات والأرض أبصر به وأسمع ما لهم من دونه من ولي ولا يشرك في حكمه أحدا واتل ما أوحي إليك من كتاب ربك لا مبدل لكلماته ولن تجد من دونه ملتحدا واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه ولا تعد عيناك عنهم تريد زينة الحياة الدنيا ولا تطع من أغفلنا قلبه عن ذكرنا واتبع هواه وكان أمره فرطا وقل الحق من ربكم فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليكفر إنا أعتدنا للظالمين نارا أحاط بهم سرادقها <تصفيق> وإن يستغيثوا يغاثوا بماء كالمهل يشوي الوجوه بئس الشراب وساءت مرتفقا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات إنا لا نضيع أجر من أحسن عملا أولئك لهم جنات عدن تجري من تحتهم الأنهار يحلون فيها من أساور من ذهب ويلبسون ويلبسون ثيابا خضرا من سندس وإستبرق متكئين فيها على الأرائك نعم الثواب وحسنت مرتفقا واضرب لهم مثل الرجلين جعلنا لأحدهما جنة 
جنتين من أعناب وحففناهما بنخل وجعلنا بينهما زرعا كلتا الجنتين آتت أكلها ولم تظلم منه شيئا وفجرنا خلالهما نهرا وكان له ثمر فقال لصاحبه وهو يحاوره أنا أكثر منك مالا وأعز نفرا ودخل جنته وهو ظالم لنفسه قال ما أظن أن تبيد هذه أبدا وما أظن الساعة قائمة ولئن رددت إلى ربي لأجدن خيرا منها منقلبا قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره أكفرت بالذي خلقك من تراب ثم من نطفة ثم سواك رجلا لكن هو الله ربي ولا أشرك بربي أحدا ولولا إذ دخلت جنتك قلت ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله إن ترني أنا أقل منك ما لو وولدا فعسى ربي أن يؤتيني خيرا من جنة ويرسل ويرسل عليها حسبانا من السماء فتصبح صعيدا زلقا أو يصبح ماؤها غورا فلن تستطيع له طلبا وأحيط بثمره فأصبح يقلب كفيه على ما أنفق فيها وهي خاوية على عروشها ويقول يا ليتني لم أشرك بربي أحدا ولم تكن له فئة ينصرونه من دون الله وما كان منتصرا هنالك الولاية لله الحق هو خير ثوابا وخير عقبا واضرب لهم مثل الحياة الدنيا كما إن أنزلناه من السماء فاختلط به نبات الأرض فأصبح فأصبح هشيما تذروه الرياح وكان الله على كل شيء مقتدرا المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير أملا ويوم نسير الجبال وترى الأرض بارزة وحشرناهم فلم نغادر منهم أحدا وعرضوا على ربك صفا لقد جئتمونا كما خلقناكم أول مرة بل زعمتم أن لن نجعل لكم موعدا 
ووضع الكتاب فترى المجرمين مشفقين مما فيه ويقولون يا ويلتنا ويقولون يا ويلتنا ما لهذا الكتاب لا يغادر صغيرة ولا كبيرة إلا أحصاها ووجدوا ما عملوا حاضرا ولا يظلم ربك أحدا وإذ قلنا للملائكة اسجدوا لآدم فسجدوا إلا إبليس كان من الجن ففسق عن أمر ربه أفتتخذونه وذريته أولياء من دوني وهم لكم عدو بئس للظالمين بدلا ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم ما أشهدتهم خلق السماوات والأرض ولا خلق أنفسهم وما كنت متخذ المضلين عضدا ويوم يقول نادوا شركائي الذين زعمتم فدعوهم فلم يستجيبوا لهم وجعلنا بينهم موبقا ورأى المجرمون النار فظنوا أنهم مواقعوها ولم يجدوا عنها مصرفا ولقد صرفنا في هذا القرآن للناس من كل مثل وكان الإنسان أكثر شيء جدلا وما منع الناس أن يؤمنوا إذ جاءهم الهدى ويستغفروا ربهم إلا أن تأتيهم سنة الأولين أو يأتيهم العذاب قبلا وما نرسل المرسلين إلا مبشرين ومنذرين ويجادل الذين كفروا بالباطل ليدحضوا به الحق واتخذوا آياتي وما أنذروا هزوا ومن أظلم من من ذكر بآيات ربه فأعرض عنها ونسي ما قدمت يداه إنا جعلنا على قلوبهم أكنة أن يفقهوه وفي آذانهم وقرا وإن تدعوهم إلى الهدى فلن يهتدوا إذا أبدا وربك الغفور ذو الرحمة لو يؤاخذهم بما كسبوا لعجل لهم العذاب بل لهم موعد لن يجدوا من دونه موئلا وتلك القرى أهلكناهم لما ظلموا وجعلنا لمهلكهم موعدا وإذ قال موسى لفتاه لا أبرح حتى أبلغ مجمع البحرين أو أمضي حقبا فلما بلغ مجمع بينهما نسيا حوتهما فاتخذ سبيله في البحر سربا 
فلما جاوزا قال لفتاه آتنا غدا أنا لقد لقينا من سفرنا هذا نصبا قال أرأيت إذ أوينا إلى الصخرة فإني نسيت الحوت وما أنسانيه إلا الشيطان أن أذكره واتخذ سبيله في البحر عجبا قال ذلك ما كنا نبغ فارتدا على آثارهما قصصا فوجدا عبدا من عبادنا آتيناه رحمة من عندنا وعلمناه من لدنا علما قال له موسى هل أتبعك على أن تعلمني مما علمت رشدا قال إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا وكيف تصبر على ما لم تحط به خبرا قال ستجدني إن شاء الله صابرا ولا أعصي لك أمرا قال فإن اتبعتني فلا تسألني عن شيء حتى لا أحدث لك منه ذكرا فانطلقا حتى إذا ركبا في السفينة خرقها قال أخرقتها لتغرق أهلها لقد جئت شيئا إمرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال لا تآخذني بما نسيت ولا ترهقني من أمري عسرا فانطلقا حتى إذا لقيا غلاما فقتله قال أقتلت نفسا زكية بغير نفس لقد جئت شيئا نكرا قال ألم أقل لك إنك لن تستطيع معي صبرا قال إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني قد بلغت من لدني عذرا فانطلقا حتى إذا أتيا أهل قريتي استطعما أهلها فأبوا <تصفيق> فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فأبوا أن يضيفوهما فوجدا فيها جدارا يريد أن ينقض فأقامه قال لو شئت لاتخذت عليه أجرا قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك <تصفيق> قال هذا فراق بيني وبينك سأنبئك بتأويل ما لم تستطع عليه صبرا أما السفينة فكانت لمساكين يعملون في البحر فأردت أن أعيبها وكان وراءهم ملك يأخذ كل سفينة غصبا وأما الغلام فكان أبواه مؤمنين فخشينا أن يرهقهما طغيانا وكفرا فأردنا أن يبدلهما ربهما خيرا منه زكاة 
وأقرب رحما وأما الجدار فكان لغلامين يتيمين في المدينة وكان تحته كنز لهما وكان أبوهما صالحا فأراد ربك فأراد ربك أن يبلغ أشدهما ويستخرجا كنزهما رحمة من ربك وما فعلته عن أمري ذلك تأويل ما لم تستع عليه صبرا ويسألونك عن ذي القرنين قل سأتلو عليكم منه ذكرا إنا مكنا له في الأرض وآتيناه من كل شيء سببا فأتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مغرب الشمس وجدها تغرب في عين حمئة ووجد عندها قوما قلنا يا ذا القرنين إما أن تعذب وإما أن تتخذ فيهم حسنا قال أما من ظلم فسوف نعذبه ثم يرد إلى ربه فيعذبه عذابا نكرا وأما من آمن وعمل صالحا فله جزاء الحسنى وسنقول له من أمرنا يسرا ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ مطلع الشمس وجدها تطلع على قوم لم نجعل لهم من دونها سترا كذلك وقد أحطنا بما لديه خبرا ثم أتبع سببا <تصفيق> ثم أتبع سببا حتى إذا بلغ بين السدين وجد من دونهما قوما لا يكادون يفقهون قولا قالوا يا ذا القرنين إن يأجوج ومأجوج مفسدون في الأرض فهل نجعل لك خرجا على أن تجعل بيننا وبينهم سدا قال ما مكني فيه ربي خير فأعينوني بقوة أجعل بينكم وبينهم ردما <تصفيق> آتوني زبر الحديد حتى إذا ساوى بين الصدفين قال انفخوا حتى حتى إذا جعله نارا قال آتوني أفرغ عليه قطرا فما استطاعوا أن يظهروه وما استطاعوا له نقبا قال هذا رحمة من ربي فإذا جاء وعد ربي جعله دكاء وكان وعد ربي حقا وتركنا بعضهم يومئذ يموج في بعض ونفخ في الصور فجمعناهم جمعا وعرضنا جهنم يومئذ للكافرين عرضا 
الذين كانت أعينهم في غطاء عن ذكري وكانوا لا يستطيعون سمعا أفحسب الذين كفروا أن يتخذوا عبادي من دوني أولياء إنا أعتدنا جهنم للكافرين نزلا قل هل ننبئكم بالأحسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا <تصفيق> قل هل ننبئكم بالأخسرين أعمالا الذين ضل سعيهم في الحياة الدنيا وهم يحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا أولئك الذين كفروا بآيات ربهم ولقائه فحبطت أعمالهم فلا نقيم لهم يوم القيامة وزنا ذلك جزاؤهم جهنم بما كفروا واتخذوا آياتي ورسلي هزوا إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات كانت لهم جنات الفردوس نزلا خالدين فيها لا يبغون عنها حولا قل لو كان البحر مدادا لكلمات ربي لنفد البحر قبل أن تنفد كلمات ربي ولو جئنا بمثله مددا قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي I'm sorry قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي أنما إلهكم إله واحد فمن كان يرجو لقاء ربه فليعمل عملا صالحا ولا يشرك بعبادة ربه أحدا صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خيرا شيخ عبد الله دي for that beautiful recitation of Surat Al Kaf we actually just got a comment from brother Sean saying Masha Allah you almost made me cry thank you so much it was beautiful to listen بارك الله فيكم أمي الله أكسبت يا رب from all of us again over again يا الله تعالى بارك الله فيك السلام عليكم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته right uh, we were just listening to the beautiful recitation of Sheikh Abdul Latif you can follow his institute at Itran Institute on Facebook and Instagram and you can learn more by going to Itran Institute uh, dot com inshallah if you enjoyed this recitation, if you found it beautiful, definitely give this video a like on YouTube so that it gets recommended to more people and more people enjoy and benefit from uh, the beautiful recitation and the reflections that will follow, inshallah. And if you have not subscribed yet or turned on the notification bell, definitely do so so that you never miss a video from us. A reminder that sharing is caring. Uh, we have posted the, this event's flyer on our social media. So you can share on your own social media and you can share the link with your friends and family, celebratemercy.com slash Friday as we are transitioning into the reflection and lesson portion of the program, inshallah. Uh, but before we do that, we have a dua request for Layla Matkur. 
This is actually the aunt of the founder of Celebrate Mercy, uh, Tariq El Masidi. Uh, many of you might have seen him hosting these programs uh, regularly. Unfortunately, his aunt is uh, sick. Um, she has cancer and uh, the doctors have only, uh, I think, given her a couple more days to live. So let's please raise our hands in dua and pray. Ya Allah, please grant healing to Sister Layla who has cancer and allow the suffering she has experienced to erase her sins. Please bring ease and comfort to her and her family during this critical time and grant Sister Layla and her entire family Jannatul Firdos without judgment. Amin. Uh, please pray for our dear sister, the aunt of the founder of Celebrate Mercy, uh, Brother Tariq El Masidi. And as well, uh, we have these uh, khat uh, Quran khatams and Surah Yasin recitations from last week. Uh, one of them for the grandfather of Subhan Bahora, one of our co-workers, uh, Brother uh, Yaqub Bahora, um, the grandfather of our team members. So you can go to bit.ly slash Quran for YV. The link will be uh, in the chat, inshallah, if you want to sign up to recite Surah Yasin or uh, a juz of the Quran for our dear brother's uh, grandfather. And as well, the dear father of Dalia, Yasmin, and Mona uh, Mogahed, who passed away last week. Uh, may Allah be pleased with him. You can also sign up to read Quran and Surah Yasin uh, for uh, the father of these uh, brilliant uh, you know, daughters. And you can go to bit.ly slash Quran for EM. And this link will also be posted in the chat, inshallah, for you all to sign up. And uh, if you would like to sponsor a Friday Gems program, if you have been enjoying our programs, uh, you can email info at celebratemercy.com. We will have a dua for you, your family, your specific needs for everyone who is watching, the hundred people uh, plus people who watch live and the thousands who watch later to make dua for you and your family as you, uh, you know, sponsor this program and allow everyone to enjoy uh, these free programmings, inshallah. And I will talk more about this Friday giveaway at the end of the program, but we're giving away a very unique uh, Arabic learning device. Uh, but stay tuned for that. I'll give more information near the end of the program, inshallah. But for now, we're going to move on to the reflection portion of our program, reflecting on uh, the verses of Surah Al-Kaf by Imam Ahmad Deeb. We're very excited to have both him and his father uh, back here with us. Uh, we enjoyed their beautiful recitations and reflections throughout the blessed month of Ramadan. So it's great to have both of them back with us today. Imam Ahmad Deeb is the Imam and Director of Religious Affairs at the Islamic Center of Greater Toledo. In addition to formal seminary training abroad in South Africa and continued apprenticeship under his father, who was an Imam for 35 years, he holds an MA in Islamic Studies and Leadership, and his thesis topic was Reforming Islamic Reform. Ma'loom min al bil darura, the theology of law and the epistemological limits of ijtihad. He is also the co-founder of itkhaninstitute.com and is a researcher in community psychology. So we're very blessed to have you joining us once again. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Good to see you again, Sayyidah Mutahira, mashallah. Good to be back with all of you. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nwala. I have a very small reflection for you um, on this beautiful chapter, the 18th chapter of the Quran. And this is a chapter that we're required to uh, recite every single Friday. We're also taught that this chapter is a protection from the great fitna. What is the great fitna, right? Fitna to dajjal the fitna of Dajjal, the great tribulation of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. And there's so many, um, there's so many wisdoms in this chapter that are like standalone, right? But, you know, I was reflecting, subhanAllah, before our session as to certain themes that are present throughout the entire chapter that are relevant to why this is a protection from the Dajjal, right? And why this is a means of protection from tribulation in general, the greatest of which is the Antichrist. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to, you know, not be here during that great test. And for that, I'd like to reflect on verse number six of Surah Al-Kahf. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
he says بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فلا علك باخع نفسك على آثارهم إن لم يؤمنوا بهذا الحديث أسفا ما شاء الله you could see it so beautifully laid out in front of you now perhaps you O Prophet will grieve yourself to death over their denial of these words of this message if they continue to disbelieve in this message now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an affirmation of a lesson that I truly believe is a theme throughout this whole chapter and that is doing our best leaving the rest with Allah doing our best and leaving the rest there you go you have a little slogan you can put it on a t-shirt and start selling it <laughs> right make a make a t-shirt out of it right and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying indirectly and very gently you know you're worrying yourself to death over something that's not even in your hands to begin with why why would you do that your task is to deliver and you've delivered and your task is to do just that and leave the rest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worrying over those who constantly reject you constantly deny you constantly abuse you right that is not the attitude that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach us through the example of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi Right, the greatest of creation. The attitude that he wants to teach us is you are meant to do your best and leave the rest. Let it be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what's so interesting is that this is the beginning of the chapter and throughout the entire chapter, you're finding this theme. You're finding it in the story of the young, uh, 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 the youth that, they did their best. They ran away. This is the cave. We're going to hide here. We don't know what the future holds. We're leaving it in the, in, in the hands of Allah. And Allah gives them a miracle. Fast forward. The story of the two gardens. Right? Dude, all you had to do was step in and say, Alhamdulillah. All you had to do was say, Thank you, Allah, for this. Just to, you, You've done. That's it. That's your part. Thank you, Allah. That'll prevent you from, you know, uh, 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 the pain that comes when something is taken away and it wasn't grounded in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this guy became so foolish as to think I did all this. Allah didn't even do this for me. He may not even resurrect me for the day of judgment. You're finding time and time again. And again, the, 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 the benefits of this chapter is to protect us from the jad. And there's so many conversations about we're in the end of times, we're in the end of times, we're in the end of times. Okay. Are we just going to sing end of times blues for like our entire day? Or are we going to say we're in the end of times? The Prophet Sallallahu prepared us for this. Read Surah Kaf. Hold on to your faith. Stake with your family. Avoid useless conversations. Be in a spiritual environment that preserves the faith of you and your family. We know what to do. I'm going to do what I can and leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, my beloved, you know, brothers, sisters, elders, teachers, it's so important for us to constantly remember we are not the controller of affairs. God is. And that should bring healing and comfort to every one of us, knowing all we're demanded to do is try our best with the means that we're given in the circle of influences around us and leave the rest of all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you do that I just want to conclude with this if you do that you do your best with the circumstances that you were given your legacy will be just as great as someone who did their best with better circumstances okay I believe that and this is part of our deen this is part of our deen right you may not be some imam like myself who, mashallah, speaks to hundreds and thousands of people. And you might think, oh, man, I wish. I wish I could have that level of impact. This is a mistake. That's not what we learn from this. What we learn from this is 
Allah has given you beautiful circumstances. If you do your best with the means that you were given, your legacy, right, will be just as great, if not greater, than someone who were given different circumstances and different opportunities, right? So trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No matter how bleak things get, simply try your best effort and leave everything else in the hands of Allah for he is the controller of all affairs and he is the one that brings about results, not us. Whether we see them or not, irrelevant. We're simply here to do what is best with what we've been given for Allah's sake. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a reliance. One of the hadith, one of the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah, Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atika ma tuballighuna bihi jannatak wa min al-yaqini ma tuhawinu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya. And give us a certainty, right? Which is inextricably linked to having reliance upon Allah. Give us a certainty in you, O Allah, that makes the trials of life easy. Ameen ya rabbal alameen. Barakallahu fikum. Uh, oops, Jazakallah uh, Khairan, Imam Ahmadi, for, for that beautiful and succinct, you know, uh, Friday reflection. We got some comments here. Uh, Sister Sylvia was saying that she really needed to hear that part mm. since worrying never helps us. And yeah, uh, yeah, Brother Sean also said that he just had this conversation with someone who's worried sick over the conspiracy of the new world order. <laughs> hey man, that's the scary stuff. <laughs> so he advised him the same that maybe it's Allah's master plan. Mashallah. Yeah. So Jazakallah Khairan, uh, Imam yeah. Ahmad Deeb, and Inshallah, we're looking forward to hearing your Friday lessons as well. All right, Inshallah. Are we going to segue right into it, or you got? Uh, no, no. I'll bring you back in a couple. Okay, <laughs> Inshallah. <laughs> All right. Um, so we're just listening to um, the reflections on Surat Al-Kaf by uh, Imam Ahmad Deeb. You can follow him on Twitter and Instagram at Imam Deeb. And you can learn more about uh, their uh, Islamic Center of uh, Greater Toledo at icdt.org, inshallah. And uh, we're a reminder that you are watching the Friday Jams program. We just uh, finished the recitation and reflection on Surat Al-Kaf. And shortly, we will be moving to uh, the Friday lesson and the Q&A uh, with Imam Ahmad Deeb. And you have time to still share this link with your friends and family, celebratemercy.com slash Friday. So you can also join and benefit from this uh, beautiful program. And right after this program, we are going to go on Clubhouse with Imam Deeb, inshallah, for uh, just 40 minutes to have a more intimate conversation. If you want to come uh, on the mic and, uh, you know, uh, talk and, um, uh, you know, ask your questions, share your thoughts. Uh, you can definitely uh, do that there, inshallah. Um, so uh, you can, if you don't have the app Clubhouse, you can download it uh, by, uh, you know, going to the app store, downloading Clubhouse and joining us right after this program in our Clubhouse room. And I just wanted to remind you all as well about our Share the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in prisons campaign. We are at 49% of our goal. And this is phase three of our um, campaign. So we've uh, printed and distributed over 1,200 copies of uh, Shamoy al muhammadiyah the descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to inmates in prisons. And there is a high uh, demand for this. They uh, are in constant communication with us, requesting a variety of books, which we uh, you know, send as many as we can. But our goal is really to continue printing and distributing this book specifically to share uh, the message of the Prophet and the light of the Prophet in prisons. So if you would like to support our campaign, we're planning to uh, print and distribute another 2,000 copies in the next couple of months. Uh, so you can definitely go to celebratemercy.com slash prisons uh, to help us in this cause, inshallah. And as well, I wanted to let you all know about this 15-month Quranic Arabic journey in which you can, you know, increase your relationship with Quranic Arabic, uh, get to learn more about how what you are reciting, how you are reciting, uh, what the words mean, and, you know, uh, getting a closer relationship with the Quran in general uh, through a Fawakeh Institute starting this September until uh, next December, inshallah. So you can take $600 off by using the code CMERCY25 and go to fawakeh.org slash CMERCY. And the um, link is in the chat as well. 
Uh, once again, let's make dua for our uh, dear sister, Leila Mat uh, Matkur, the aunt of uh, Tariq al Masidi, the founder of Celebrate Mercy, who uh, has been fighting uh, cancer and uh, it has now been given a couple of days left to live. Uh, let's raise our hands and dua and pray, Ya Allah, please grant healing to Sister Layla who has cancer and allow the suffering she has experienced to erase her sins. Please bring ease and comfort to her and her family during this critical time. Grant Sister Layla and her entire family Jannah Tulfirdos without judgment. Amin. And uh, if you would like to sponsor a Friday GEMS program, if you would like to continue providing these pro free programming to everyone who is watching, and as well, I have everyone who is watching make dua for you and your family, you can email info at celebratemercy.com with your specific family's requests, duas, and we'll have a slide with your duas up for everyone who is watching and later on to make dua for you and your family. And uh, the, this is the Friday giveaway that I said I would talk a little bit more about. Uh, this uh, cool electronic device is called Kitab. It's an Arabic learning audio pen. So uh, it's really interesting. I saw a demo of it. You basically put the, uh, the electronic on top of an Arabic sentence or a word and it reads it out loud for you. So uh, for young children or for people who are learning Arabic, it's a wireless audio learning device and uh, it has workbooks as well and apparently it has games as well. So it's very small. It's like uh, you can charge it with a USB and it's a really great way to uh, read Arabic, or follow along, listen to Arabic. Uh, so if you are interested in winning this uh, very uh, amazing device, for your kids, or if you're someone who is learning Arabic, uh, you can enter the giveaway by uh, going to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway. Uh, the post uh, is hopefully up by now, but if it's not, it will be by the end uh, of the program, inshallah. Uh, so without further ado, uh, moving on to the next uh, portion, a reminder that there will be a Q&A session uh, after the lesson. Uh, so make sure to, uh, you know, ask your questions while you are listening. If anything comes to your mind, uh, type it right away or email questions at celebratemercy.com. If you want us to read your questions uh, anonymously, a lot of times when the Q&A period starts, uh, we don't have any questions yet. And then just as we're starting to get into it and wrapping up, all the questions come pouring in and we don't have time to get to all of them. So definitely make sure to send your questions in as soon as possible so we can get to them all um, if possible. And now uh, I will just reintroduce uh, Imam Ahmad Deeb to bring him up for his lesson, inshallah. Imam Ahmad Deeb is the Imam and Director of Religious Affairs at the Islamic Center of Greater Toledo. In addition to formal seminary training abroad in South Africa and continued apprenticeship under his father, who was an Imam for 35 years, he holds an MA in Islamic Studies and Leadership. His thesis topic was Reforming Islamic Reform, Ma'lum Menazin Bil Darura, The Theology of Law and the Epistemological Limits of Ijtihad. He is also the co-founder of Institute.com and is a researcher in community psychology. So we are grateful to have you back with us again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عباد الله أصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله تعالى كما قال سبحانه في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته we begin in the name of Allah, the most merciful, the most kind. We ask him to send his peace and blessings upon our noble messenger, Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and upon his honorable family and his blessed companions. May God be pleased with all of them. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send peace and blessings upon all messengers and guides and prophets that came before our beloved Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as guides to humanity. Uh, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be discussing a topic that's very, very, very dear to my heart. Um, and it's on the idea of having emotional intelligence and embracing others with kindness. Embracing others with kindness. One time the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was approached by one of the companions. And he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, 
أي الإسلامي خير he said he uh, he was he was asked what is the best form of islam okay what's the what's the best thing that i can do as a muslim the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told him two things he said tut'imu at-ta'am tut'imu at-ta'am feed people okay be in the service of others in particular feeding feeding people the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam emphasized food and security um, throughout his entire period as uh, uh, you know in uh, on this earth uh, food and security was always paramount an imperative priority rising to that social uh, uh, problem um, and he so he said feed people and the second thing he said and to greet people with peace those you know and those you don't so the best of actions literally is to greet those you don't know to greet though to greet people those you know and those you don't and to feed others why is feeding others linked to greeting people and with an emphasis on greeting those you don't know well because even service is not meant to de be depersonalized Right. There's a lot of times where, you know, in our acts of service and our acts of feeding people, it's like a chore. We get it done. We, we we hand people and we feel good about ourselves. But that's not the sunnah of the Prophet The sunnah of the Prophet is personalized, emotionally intelligent, kind service to others. And I remember when I was growing up in Orlando, Florida, we had this amazing project. It was called Project Downtown. It's an effort all across the country where you go downtown. And, you know, it was a service to feed feed the homeless and not just feed them, but enter into conversation with them. And that was actually my favorite part of every single weekend when I would when I would be able to attend is that there was an emphasis in the culture of that group that you are not just there to hand them a bag with food. You're there to greet them with peace. You are there to make conversation. And something my father taught me growing up is that always recognize that when you are doing an act of service, that is first and foremost really a service to yourself. That you should feel honored that God chose you to be in a position where you can serve someone else and implement the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. That when you are in conversation with someone who's had difficult circumstances and is homeless, right? We should see them as our teachers. That we are there honored, you know, waiting for the opportunity to learn from them through those conversations. This was a paradigm shift I had from a very uh, uh, early age by my father. And it, and it, and it, encapsulates what we're mentioning in this hadith that our task in all that we do including our service is to spread peace and kindness and love i had a conversation not too long ago with a dear friend of mine sheikh uh, omer hasib may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him you might know him from ta'lif collective he's a religious director at ta'lif and um we were kind of like we were kind of asking ourselves, right? Does community produce love or does love produce community? <laughs> and we kind of both were coming to this exact same conclusion, just like kind of in conversation about the Quran and Sunnah. What, what are we called to do? And we, we came to the same conclusion that no, like a community organically becomes a community when it's rooted in love. That that showing an expression of love is what allows us to build beautiful and strong communities. It's not that you build community and then like somehow, you know, through that love happen. No, it's that love has to be the underlying foundational principle of community. And again, this is what's encapsulated in this hadith. The Prophet says, the best of actions is to feed others and to greet those you know and those you don't. The Prophet Sallallahu in another hadith, listen to this, because it's all going to come together, inshallah. The Prophet Sallallahu 
He said once, لن تؤمنوا, لن تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا. Forgive me. لن تؤمنوا حتى تراحموا. You will not believe, you will not have full belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until you show mercy to one another. The Prophet sallallahu uh, alayhi wa forgive me, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu responded. They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Kuluna rahimun ya Rasulullah. We're all merciful. <laughs> and my my personal uh, reading into this, it's it's you know take it or leave it. I, I haven't done like historical research on this, but what 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 you get from the context is that it's almost like the companions were saying, "Ya Rasulullah, we get it. You've been emphasizing mercy and love, mercy and love, mercy and love, mercy and love. Like we're doing that. We've been doing that. We get it now, right? We're all merciful towards one another. Almost as if to indirectly kind of." Remind us how emphatic the Prophet ﷺ was about this. And the Prophet ﷺ said something so beautiful. He said, he said, It is not a mercy. What I'm referring to is not mercy that you show to your friend. That one you like. The one you already know. Right? You're close to. It is a general, vast mercy. So, what are we getting again? The Prophet ﷺ is emphasizing yet again being loving and merciful and embracing others with kindness, not just the people that we like and those that know us. In another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ, it's one of my favorite hadith. Because it's so, so it, it, it is one of the most amazing hadith that highlights the emotional intelligence of the Prophet. The Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, It is prohibited for two people in a gathering of three to talk to one another privately. So imagine you're in a gathering of three, and you and your friend. I don't know, you're gathering of three, you all speak English, but the two of you speak Gujarati or what have you. And, you know, in your language, privately, you kind of talk amongst oneself. The Prophet ﷺ said this is prohibited. Why did he say that? Because he said, this surely will make the third person sad. Yuhzinuhu. Right? Hadha yuhzinuhu. That it will make them sad. What do we get from all of this? What we get from all of this is that, I mean, it's all self-evident, right, from these hadith. But the, the main point, the main theme that runs through all of these beautiful prophetic wisdoms is recognizing that one of the most important traits to have is emotional intelligence that leads to sensitivity, which leads to embracing everyone with kindness. This was the Prophet Sallallahu And it's so sad. It's so sad that many of us prioritize IQ over EQ. And I'm telling you, if you look at studies now, they'll tell you that the most successful people in the world are actually those with the highest emotional intelligence. Not just intellectually they can hang. Emotional intelligence. Right? That we don't prioritize this as much. And what's even worse is a weird kind of development that, you know, has probably been pre-modern and modern, right? We try to blame everything on the modern world. I'm pretty sure this existed throughout history, right? Where sensitivity is something to be ashamed of. Oh, you're too sensitive, right? What are you talking about? The whole point of the mercy that the Prophet taught, the 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 underline the undertone of that is is sensitivity. If you don't have sensitivity, how are you going to know? You know, if I'm in a group of three, I probably shouldn't be speaking in Urdu because this guy does not know what we're talking about, and that might offend. Oh, but I, I know him. You don't. You don't know, man. That might make them sad. That might cause them to have an opinion that oh, they're talking about me. That can only come from 
And emotional intelligence that is rooted in sensitivity. So one thing that we really have to start prioritizing again as a community that is unfortunately not as present in many of our spaces is recognizing love and peace, the greetings of peace and mercy. That is a vast mercy that is shown to everyone that we are required if we claim the prophet muhammad sallallahu if you claim something else whatever you know to to each their own if you claim the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we are required to embrace everyone with a level of kindness that is rooted in a sensitive emotional intelligence that allows the environment to breed a mercy that prevents from so that so many so many of these quarrels that continue to happen in our community Right. That's why after every single Juma, after every single Juma, I always tell my community, every Juma without fail, at the end of the Juma, after the prayer, you know, at the end of our announcements, I say, greet people you don't know that you've not seen before. Smile, right? Greet others that you don't know before, because this is the commandment of the Prophet. Sasa. This was the, his, his instruction. Is that we are not meant to be just merciful and loving and whatever to those in our inner circles. This is not what community is about. That doesn't mean you can't have inner circles. I mean, that's just, of course you can have inner circles. I mean, birds of a feather flock together. This is natural. Palestinians are going to want to hang out with other Palestinians. That's not racist. <laughs> it's not prejudiced. It's just like, I'm a Palestinian. I have more in common with another Palestinian. I might not always be the case, but if it happens, hey, what's what's the problem with that? This doesn't mean everyone has to be your best friend. But what it does have to mean is that if you are part of a community, you are obligated as a Muslim to constantly welcome and embrace others into your circles with kindness. That doesn't mean they have to be your best friend. And you know what's so incredible? If you look at these like Hollywood films, there's always like an underdog story that we love so much, right? And even like Spider-Man, you know, and, and, and so many of these other superheroes, one of the things that's so inspiring is when they take you back to their like early life and they show like a troubled, maybe semi-awkward teenager. And there's like that scene at the lunch table where like this awkward kid comes in and maybe he's like, he has a friend group, but he sees that kid like just sitting by himself at the lunch table. And then he goes and sits with him. And then they're like, hey, aren't you going to sit with us, his friends? And he's like, no, 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 I'm going to sit with this person. And everyone, <laughs> we're all watching this like, Allahu Akbar, that's so beautiful. We got tears running down our eyes, right? Because embracing with kindness, the vulnerability of others is so beautiful so beautiful such that it is literally like become a standard for the stories that we tell the stories of uh, uh heroism that we tell that there, there's a level of sensitivity which is why he's a good superhero he he cares about not just a few people he cares about everyone and he's sensitive to the things that other people aren't sensitive to this was the prophet sallallahu Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the prophet. He was sensitive to the things that often people didn't even notice. This is why if you read the Shama'il, you will find stated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the companion would say, he made everyone feel like they were his best friend. Even when they knew he wasn't their best friend or they weren't like his closest person. He made them feel that way. And so, in conclusion, let us remember, based on these instructions from the Prophet wasallam, that the true mark of religious practice, the true mark of a balanced religiosity grounded in the example of the Prophet wasallam, the true mark of religious, being religious, is how you treat others that are not within your group. How you treat others that you may not even like. That is when the principles of this faith 
come to bear. That is when the principles of this faith are meant to be applied. And that is one of the greatest metrics of your spiritual and religious growth. If you're still only kind and loving and greeting of peace to those that you know and you like, you still have a long way to go. But if you great someone that you already have an issue with, but you're going to squash it anyway because not greeting someone for three days due to an issue is haram, and you know that, that is an indication that you are growing spiritually. And that you are developing a balanced conception of what it means to be a committed religious Muslim. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us sensitive to all the concerns of others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us uh, uh, amongst those who express kindness and love to everyone around us. And not those that, that, that simply are good to us or that, are, that, that, that we like. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be sensitive to the pain of others around us and make us sources of peace and comfort to them in their times of difficulty and in all other times. Amin ya rabbil alameen. Subhana rabbika rabbil azzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al-musaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. MashaAllah, JazakAllah khairan, uh, Imam Ahmad Di, for that, you know, deeply yeah. touching um, topic, the Prophet's emotional intelligence and kindness. You know, we've had um, comments coming in saying, so beautiful, straight from and to the heart, uh, bullseye reminder. Thank you mm -hmm. so much. And uh, Sister Aisha said, you know, MashaAllah, let's really follow the sunnah of our Prophet. Mm -hmm. Sister Carolyn said, so inspiring and heartwarming. And, you know, continuously, you know, it's great reminder is much needed. Uh, so um, thank you so much. We're entering our Q&A uh, portion. So everyone who is watching, uh, if you have any questions, leave your questions in the chat or you can email uh, questions at celebratemercy.com. You can see it in the run, running banner here and we'll put that uh, in the chat as well. Uh, we have gotten some questions already. So just to uh, jump into, into the conversation. Um, you know, one of the questions that we've gotten is, how do we teach boys or men that being sensitive, kind, and sweet is okay? And how do we teach them that the macho characteristic is not necessary since um, the person who asked this feels like men have more pressure from their peers to be macho? Mm. <laughs> Great question. Um, so uh, first, first, first of all, bismillah, bismillah, rahman rahim. First of all, um, the companions, it was said about the companions that they were laid back and they would sit in the mosque at times and talk about their struggles of the past and their stories of coming into Islam. But listen to what they were said, uh, uh, what was said about them. That, and these were men, the, the male companions, but this applies to the female companions as well. It was said about them that if they were asked to compromise any part of their faith, it would be like seeing someone that has gone mad. Okay? So what we learn from the Prophet wasallam, and in the examples of the companions is that actually there was a level of fierceness to especially a man, right? There is a level of strength that a man is meant to embody. And we should not shame that. And by the way, I'm not saying the questioner did that at all. I'm going to, I'm going to, inshallah, uh, give it context. Don't worry. Right. So, you know, whether you want to call it macho, or what have you, that, that was something that was emphasized by the Prophet, right? That Omar radiallahu anhu, right? Which the Prophet said, if there was a prophet after me, it would be Omar. Omar radiallahu anhu was very strong. And that doesn't mean he was rude and a jerk, by the way. Sometimes we have this weird conception of Omar radiallahu anhu. He was not like that. No, but he was strong when he needed to be. When he needed to be. Yet, listen to this. The same person said, if you cannot cry every day, you should force yourself to cry. Because your inability to express those feelings to Allah, right? Crying for the sake of Allah is a sign of a dead heart. Same Omar, radiallahu anhu. Same super macho Omar is saying, if you can't cry, force yourself to cry. And this was a lesson to the men. So there's a balance. I think what's happening 
is there is a a culture uh, that is, uh, you know, we have to be uh, very, very open about this. We have to discuss this. I don't have all the answers, but it's very clear that we do have a culture that is, is increasingly emasculating for men. And we have to discuss that. We have to talk about that. At the same time, we there is something that can be labeled as an improper masculinity. I don't want to use the word toxic because that's like that word is so abused now. But if you if it helps for you to 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 use that, that's fine. But there is an imbalanced type of masculinity, and one of the uh, um, imbalances is men thinking that they're not supposed to express emotion, that they're not supposed to cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, what's worse is men thinking that simply because I have maybe a heavier load of responsibility in certain contexts and because I'm supposed to be a man, that I'm not supposed to talk to anyone about my feelings, right? That Which is absolutely not true. The companions used to do that all the time, right? And they were men. They were strong men. They went to they went they went to war to defend uh, 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 the Muslims. These were strong men, and these were the same men that cried in prayer every single night. These were the same men that were sensitive to animals so much so that Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu did just literally stood there with a cat on his lap simply because he didn't want to wake it up. <laughs> he just he just sat for hours not wanting to wake up the cat despite the fact that he had to go somewhere. This is the same one that was at war, that went to war, that went into battles, fearfully, right? Defending uh, 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 his community and his family. So, you know, th this idea that these are somehow mutually exclusive, you're either like someone that's so in tune with their feelings and you're kind of, yeah, yeah, th there's none of these masculine traits that we know uh, uh, are, are, you could refer to them as traditional masculine traits, or the other extreme where, masculinity means like there is no talk of one's feelings or emotions. Don't speak to someone if you're going through it simply because you're supposed to be a man and you're supposed to do it all yourself. This is, this is improper masculinity. This is imbalanced masculinity. So, you know, because of these extremes and imbalances, you have a, uh, uh, several, you know, you have, you have more than one generation now that have no idea what it even means to be a man. Right. And I will say, I will say, because you asked a beautiful question, how do we teach that? I wish I can tell you that is done through a book. I wish I could tell you that. I wish I could tell you it was as easy as here's a collection of the sunnah on masculinity, give it to them. It's, I, I wish I could say that that was effective. That is a piece of it that we need to do. Imam Dawood Walid recently released a book on Futua, which is really rising to this crisis of masculinity that so many men face for multiple different reasons uh, uh, due to many different variables. So buy that book, Imam Ghazali Institute. That's a good step, right? First, learn what it means to uh, uh, be an actual man. What is balanced masculinity? And if you read enough of the seerah, you already have a sense of this. You know the Prophet Wasallam, the general principle the Prophet Sallallahu defined masculinity with really one major principle. What it means to be a true man, he said, it is not to have physical strength. That isn't the ultimate sign of masculinity. The Prophet Sallallahu said, to be a true man is one that does not react when triggered, when they have an impulse to react. One that has hilm, one that has forbearance. This does not mean that one simply ignores what they feel. No, it simply means that they're wise enough to hold it, acknowledge it, and not react to it. That was the Prophet Sallallahu definition of masculinity, right? And so uh, one of, one of his, his primary definitions of, of, of masculinity. So, you know, as we mentioned, you know, having a balanced masculinity we're seeing it through the example of the Prophet. He was very sensitive, and yet he was also fierce. So he was telling us number one, don't react. That's a sign of ultimate masculinity. Number two is that um, when the time comes for strength, you are strong and uncompromising, right? And fierce. And there's also a time where 
you are to be laid back and sensitive, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And these are not mutually exclusive. That point has been made. Number one, there's material on it. Number two, and here's the real answer. Dr. Cornell West says something really beautiful. He says, I am who I am because someone loved me. I am who I am because someone loved me. And one of the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, I was just reading to my community uh, not too long ago, was about um, was about one of Muawiyah's nephews. If I'm not mistaken, I might be mistaken by the companion, but one of the uh, uh, Muawiyah's his nephew, he saw something in the road that was an obstruction, and he and he moved it immediately. And Muawiyah radiallahu anhu, he asked him, "Why did you do this?" And he said, "What?" He says, I saw you do it, oh uncle, and I did it. And so we have to understand transmission of knowledge and values comes through lived embodiment, okay? Modeled behavior. You can get, I'm telling you right now, you can give 6,000 khutbas on masculinity. But if men do not have masculine, healthy, masculine role models in their community, and it starts with the father, that will not make its impact. It will make an impact. It will not make an impact such that cultural change is possible. Where we have balanced men, right? That, you know, what's been happening, you know, uh, one, of the, one of the sisters who passed away because her ex-husband, right? came and and literally literally uh, uh murdered her and 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 killed himself this is this is as emasculine as it gets this is this is literally anti masculinity right this is this is un unbelievably despicable behavior i can't even fat i don't even have words to describe this that a man thinks that masculinity is about overpowering physically his wife right that domestic violence is some thing that he can do by way of justification through the Quran. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. In fact, I'll tell you right now, in I, I come from Syria ethnically, okay? I'm telling you, in Syria, if there was even an indication that a man touched his wife, <laughs> I'll just keep it there. Like, that person, that person would fear for his life because the culture of masculinity in Syria was not reacting, having responsibilities, uh, 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 rising to your responsibilities, take care of your family with honor and grace and strength and never, ever laying a finger on, uh, on your wife or your, your sister or your, uh, 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 your mother. Astaghfirullah. These things happen. These things happen. And it happens because of an imbalanced culture that is no longer rooted in the true example of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who never hit anyone, much less his, his wives. So, forgive me, <laughs> getting a little passionate, but we need to understand it's going to start at home. It's going to start at home. And it has to, it has to be rooted in modeled behavior, embodied knowledge. You saw the, there was a recent Yaqeen Institute article that came out on religious identity amongst Muslims. You all should read it, right? I, I, you know, everyone, a lot of people ask me, Imam, you know, what can we do for our youth? Tell us how to do youth work. I tell them, we don't need youth work. We need family work. If you want to do youth work, do family work. Because you can have the most amazing halaqas in your masjid. You can have all the religious babysitting that you want. You can have all of it. And if the family itself is not an alliance, an alignment, forgive me, with the religious values that you are claiming you want your children to follow, it will not have its impact. Because that is the first and primary teacher of everyone, is their parents. So it starts at home. And we, we shouldn't shame people for, you know, not understanding what it means to be a man. We live in a very confusing time. We have to educate them. So the education piece is important. We should have in our masajid opportunities where people are educated what it means to be a man. Imam Imam Amin Muhammad, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him. Uh, it, it, you know, Sheikh Abdul Karim Yahya. There's so many, uh, there's so many scholars and imams that are doing this actively. 
They're modeling what it means to be a, 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 a man for young people, right? But it starts at home. It starts at home with the father and beyond that in the community, okay? If men are walking around hearing something in the membar, right? Hearing something on the pulpit and they're not seeing it at all represented in the actual community, you are literally breeding hypocrisy and you are breeding a type of disassociation and cognitive dissonance that Muslims have to live with for years and years of their life until maybe perchance Allah you know, blesses them to find an actual spiritual guide and teacher that can literally help them unlearn some of these things that they sometimes see in community. So, of course, number one, we have to provide educational resources on this. And we have to start having conversations. We have to start having conversations about these things. These things cannot be some khutbah alone. Okay, we have to be, uh, with young people, I'm always in, in our masjid, I, I see them, you know, every single every single night, alhamdulillah, every other night, I, 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 Aisha. Right, the days that I'm here, I see them at Isha. Young people, so many young people are coming, and there's always a space for them to be heard. There's always a space for them to be gently corrected, right? Because that's my duty. As if you're in my space, you're in the masjid, I have to make sure that certain things don't persist. We need to move beyond just general reminders and general information. We need to actually embody these principles and model them for the young people around us and the young men around us, right? So there's an education piece. But remember, at the end of the day, we teach people through modeling that behavior, through embodied knowledge. And we need to create spaces where people learn what that is to embody. And of course, all of it is rooted in a, in a, in a proper understanding of the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam and his shama'il, his life story, and his example, and his wisdoms, and his instructions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go on a, a, a I didn't mean to answer it in such a lengthy uh, uh, with, so, with so much time I didn't mean to spend so much time on this But it was a really, really important question uh, Forgive me if I, if I said something That, that may have rubbed you all, uh, the, the wrong way it's, I, I'm passionate about this And, and I think uh, you know, One last thing that I think is important Is that th there's too much shaming Of others And we need to stop that It's not conducive right? Like Men are not going to be more. They're not going to rise to a balanced masculinity When they feel constantly attacked in their masculinity. And I know, I know this is hard to say, and I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but we have to speak the truth, really. It's, it's, a, it's a horrible culture that we've inherited from the, the, the political stratification of our country, where there's, there's constantly groups at each other's throats, and we think that change, positive change is going to happen by shaming and attacking people. This is, this is not the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu we have to, when things are wrong, we call it out, right? And we continue to call it out. But you cannot just do that. You have to provide spaces where people are able to unlearn bad behaviors and learn better ones so that inshallah we can change the culture and be shuhada ala nas as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us to be. Be witnesses amongst the people. This is something we have to offer. Those are our, our, our American brothers and sisters and our neighbors. We have very concrete conceptions of what it means to be a man and a woman in the most confusing time, arguably in human history, about these things. We have something to offer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to offer it with kindness and love and, and, and not with unf, with, with this, this, this type of anger and, and shaming and attacking one another. I mean, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I know, mashallah, it was, a, it was an incredible answer, Mom Deev, and it was much needed. We're really grateful that you are passionate about this topic and you shared these wisdoms and gems with us, you know, from the beginning, talking about all the hadith of how the Prophet and his companions really displayed a true, you know, balanced nature of manhood. We got um, comments from you know, Brother Hassan saying, uh, you know, what incredible reminders, and it's always a joy to listen to your mm -hmm. reminders. And Sister Samar saying, such a beautiful balance of characteristics of men um, from that time. May our men be more prophetic and um, balanced, mm -hmm. mashallah. And, you know, um, mm -hmm. everyone was saying, you know, you're, you're speaking the truth. They really appreciated your answer. And Sister Rashida said, you know, you're right that we should stop shaming, uh, especially in front of others. And when you were saying that, I was 
reminded of your, you know, general talk in which you're talking about how the prophet was a mercy to everyone. And if we ever right. want to solve a problem, it's not through, you know, shaming or attacking. It's to continue being a mercy and to really just highlight, uh, you know, the best qualities of each other because men and women are olia of each other. We are we are friends of each other. We elevate each other. So um, thank you for these reminders. You know, everyone is saying, mashallah, it was uh, really good and it was, you know, much needed um, to, to hear this. And you know uh, uh, this explanation was sorely needed across all ethnicities in Islam. This issue of violence and manhood is a major yeah. ongoing fact. So thank you for your passion. I think um, everyone was deeply touched by by your response. And 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 if I if can I can I add something? I think, I sure. think something that's important. Um, you know, a child, a child, right? In successful parenting, and I think any parent here would agree with me. Ultimate success as a parent is when your child is not afraid of your punishment and shame, is afraid of your own disappointment. That alone, that alone causes them to rethink a decision. That alone causes them to go fix a mistake. Just the mere disappointment, right? How does that even get established? Love, love, mm -hmm. right? When that love is felt, right at every fiber of one's beings like dr cornell was is saying i am who i am because someone loved me that my character is the result of experiencing the love of someone else when love becomes that foundation and we take it seriously right that is the most effective way to change cultures and to uh, uh, uh fix behaviors look at the example of uh, uh abu dhar abu dhar what could be worse than saying to Bilal, the giant that he is as a companion? He's not just the, 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 the black freed slave companion, right? Bilal was a giant of a companion, not just the Mu'adhin, right? He was in charge of the treasury. He was a giant of a companion. Abu Dhar has the audacity to tell him um, because he was upset. He says, oh, son of a black woman, right? To degrade him and his mother. Bilal radiallahu anhu rushed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what could be worse than this? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam brought, and, and here's what's interesting. Abu Dhar knew he was going to go to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And when, the, when Bilal went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Dhar was just right behind him. Right behind him. Okay, he knew what was going on. He knew what was going to happen. He knew he made a mistake. And Bilal told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this what happened. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turned to Abu Dhar. He said, is this true? Did you say these words? Verified, right? Like he wanted mm -hmm. to know what, why, why did you do this? He wanted to know, first of all, is this true? What caused you to do this? Because he wants to acknowledge that, that this is a, a wrong behavior. Where could it come from? Did you do this? Abu Dhar said, yes, I did do this. The Prophet him, look what he told him. He didn't say, you despicable human being, you racist. He, do you know what he said? He said, Abu Dhar, clearly there is still jahiliya left in your heart that's all the prophet sallam had to tell him because the foundation of the relationship between the companions and the prophet was one rooted in love love and trust all he had to say was verily in your heart is still jahiliya a petulant type of angry ignorance reactionary ignorance immediately Abu Dhar put his face to the ground and he said, I will not move until your black foot steps on my white face. So that was the result of love. The Prophet Sallallahu didn't have to, you know, engage in this like weird attacking shame. No, he said, this is, this is unacceptable. This is where it came from. And because they were so afraid to simply disappoint the Prophet ﷺ, right? They went to extreme measures to fix their own behavior. But I swear by Allah, if we continue in this like petulant attacking of one another, we're not going to fix these issues. And you will not have men. You will have the pendulum swing constantly in extremes. You're going to have emasculated men 
and you're going to have incredibly violent, despicably, uh, 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 you know, men who have no idea what it means to take advantage of the strength that Allah gave them in the way that Allah taught. You're going to constantly swing between these extremes if our culture is not rooted in wanting the best for our people and making sure we are able to do that with love as the foundation and kindness as the application. And that is not mutually exclusive. To be unequivocally and passionately against the wrongs that manifest and to speak out against them with force and to do everything that we can to change them. But I humbly, I, I, I would just say that, you know, I, I think we need to move the discourse a little bit beyond just an incident happens, we act angrily to it, and we move on. Let's give our domestic violence khutbah once a year, and we move on. No, I want to see the culture of the community. What are we doing actively to institute principles and values and symbols that maintain healthy masculinity, healthy femininity, that maintain the proper right of conduct between men and women, and between each other in general? I want to see that, right, for me. Right, I want to see that, and we should all uh, raise the standard in the discourse to demand that from ourselves first and foremost in our communities. Aloha. Thank you so much for that. For that reminder, it was uh, honestly uh, incredible to listen to. Um, just going on to uh, another question by Sister Lily Rose. She said, "As an aunt with two young nephews, how to be a good role model for them as a female?" Is it true that good manners and character is learned from the father? I heard hadiths to this effect. Can you just keep that up for a second? Um, mashallah, bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam wa rasulillah. Um, really, good manners are learned from parents. That's that's the real that's the real sunnah. There are certain things that a man, a father, is going to have to teach to. Uh, his children, and there's certain things that a mother is going to have to teach to her children. Um, I would caution our community against this uh, new development in modern culture that seeks to completely erase any unique qualities that a man and a woman, a father and a mother may bring to the table in parenthood. This idea of pure egalitarianism, everything you can do, I can do, and there's no uniqueness to this, I'm sorry, I have three sisters and I was raised by mom and I know that that's not true. I know that that's not true. Our lived experience is that it says it's not true. Sunnah says that's not true. So I would caution our community against making these absolutist conclusions now simply because it's trending in our culture, right? Uh, uh, there's always balance. And so there's certain things that a father has to teach. There's certain things that a mother has to teach. And, you know, uh, uh, if, if anything, actually, our, our tradition kind of indicates that, you know, the, the mother is arguably the most important school uh, for a child. Um, and I'm not saying there isn't like uh, there, there shouldn't be cooperation in the education of children. In fact, that's exactly what I'm calling for, that both a father and a mother has to both be active in the process of educating their children and modeling behavior. Naturally, if you have a boy the father is meant to model the behavior for a boy. And if you have a girl, the mother should model the behavior for a girl. That's not to say the father has nothing to offer to the girl. And that's not to say the mother doesn't have anything to offer to the boy. I mean, our, our history uh, uh, is not that at all. Most of the scholars that became great were because they were trained first by their mom. Like that, that is almost a, 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 a mutawatir trend, right? Like it's, it's, it's almost... It's almost a factual like reality amongst all the great scholars that they had mothers that trained them and then allowed them to be the great men uh, uh, that they were. So, you know, every relationship is different. The balance is going to be struck uh, uh, differently. And, you know, uh, uh, again, that's another thing I would caution is that don't stop. Uh, uh, don't don't get in the habit of taking general parenting reminders um, for your own specific situation. If you're really serious and you're struggling, see an expert. Every single scenario is different. The balance is going to be different. Just make sure the expert that you see has also modeled that behavior and, you know, can speak to the, 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 our own value system. 
uh, which which has a lot of of important things to say uh, on this topic. So uh, in conclusion, uh, you know what we learned from the dean is that there are things that that the mother the, has uh, to teach the children, and there are things that the father has to teach the children. But most importantly, the greatest education comes from modeled behavior. And I swear, if you don't say a single word, if you don't say a single word to your child about coming to Aisha, it's important to come to Aisha, your man, just bring him to Aisha with you. And you will not even have to ever tell him Aisha is important because he sees it modeled in his father, who is meant to be an example uh, in living this deen. Wallahu alam. Mashallah, thank you so much. Um, everyone in the comments is also appreciating everything that you're saying, you know, alhamdulillah for all that you're saying. Um, and, you know, people are agreeing that, you know, we must have a balance and, and that, you know, males and females are, are, are not the same. And we all have our unique, uh, mashallah, um, talents, attributes that we can share with one another. Um, we have a couple um, deeper and longer questions. I'll save those for the clubhouse session, inshallah. Sure. Um, we can just have a, a short and sweet, um, I don't know, well, I hope it's short and sweet, but um, what are some of your go-to emotional intelligence tools? So I guess kind of how do you um, improve or evolve your emotional intelligence? This will be very, very short and sweet. Go and follow uh, Sheikha and Ustada Hussain Mujaddidi who has done amazing work in this area. And I think she has a lot of Instagram posts. She has, I think, recorded series on emotional intelligence. Just go over there and join that space. She has a space on Clubhouse as well. And um, and learn from that, inshallah. I would also, I haven't read it, but I trust the author uh, because I know him and he's a, he's a beautiful, beautiful imam and, and sheikh. Um, uh, Sheikh Mikail wrote a book on emotional intelligence of the Prophet Sallallahu You know, I would I would go ahead and purchase it. I would make that your your foundation. But you know, a lot of these things have to be taught by someone. I'm a firm believer in this. Have books. Look at you know. Obviously, I'd be a hypocrite if I told you don't buy books. That's all I do. Uh, it's my favorite thing. Uh, but at the same time, th th there has to be living heart to heart transmission. And Mashallah, Sheikh Hussain Mujaddidi is is probably one of the best people for that. So that's my answer to, to that question. Go ahead and learn from her, inshallah. Oh, mashallah, thank you so much. That's so true as well. We've always appreciated and enjoyed Astara Huzai's uh, wonderful gems about uh, emotional intelligence. So thank you for that, uh, Imam Ahmadib, and for uh, the incredible answers you gave during this Q&A session. You have a couple of minutes to rest up, inshallah, before uh, we resume our conversation in Clubhouse uh, at 5.30, inshallah. Inshallah. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Right, we were just listening to uh, the beautiful reflections and answers of Imam Ahmad Deep. And also someone asked, uh, how is Ustada Hozai's uh, name spelled? And uh, mashallah, Sister Rahma uh, backstage shared her uh, Twitter and Instagram handle. So definitely uh, check out Ustada Hozai and her incredible resources on emotional intelligence. And if you also want to follow Imam Deeb on Twitter and Instagram, you can go to at Imam Deeb and you can learn more about uh, the Islamic Center of uh, Greater Toledo by going to icdt.org. Uh, so we just had the Q&A uh, session, actually. And now we'll be moving on to our uh, Clubhouse discussion in just a couple of minutes. Uh, before that, I have a Friday giveaway or wheel to do. Um, but uh, you have time if you have not uh, downloaded the, the Clubhouse app yet to download the Clubhouse app so you can join us, uh, join Celebrate Mercy uh, by going to celebratemercy.com slash room or just finding our room on Clubhouse to join in just a couple minutes. And, and a reminder about our uh, Sharing the Prophets in Prisons campaign, our goal to print and distribute uh, Shamal al muhammadiyah the descriptions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to inmates in prisons, uh, please consider supporting our fund uh, to continue this uh, beautiful work as we are in contact with inmates uh, on a regular basis and they are continuously uh, requesting religious materials and we promise them this book in the next couple of months, inshallah. And a reminder for this 15-month uh, Quranic Arabic journey with Fawakeh Institute, if you want to increase your knowledge of Quranic Arabic, you can have a $600 discount uh, by using the code CMERCY25 
uh, and going to fawakit.org slash see mercy, inshallah. And um, if you all remember Imam Nahal Khan, who has been with us regularly and, uh, you know, recited the entire juz of the Quran for us in uh, Ramadan, he is one of the instructors uh, at Fawakit, so maybe he might be your uh, Quranic Arabic instructor. Uh, another reminder of the Friday giveaway for next week, this uh, incredible um, device. You can actually see some uh, video clips, I think, of it uh, on our giveaway page, celebratemercy.com slash giveaway. It's this electronic tool that if you, uh, you know, put over Arabic words, Arabic sentences, it actually recites it for you. It can recite the Quran for you. And it helps you learn uh, Arabic alphabet, the basic reading, Quran pronunciation. It is a wireless audio learning device and it has its own workbooks. So if you have kids who are learning Arabic, it also has games that they can play uh, to enhance their learning. Or if you um, don't know Arabic yourself and you are learning, this could be an amazing tool for you and you will receive one of these pens as well as a workbook of your choice. So this is an uh, amazing giveaway. So you can go to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway uh, to uh, enter the giveaway. And hopefully by next week, uh, we will, um, well, yeah. So the deadline is next Friday, August uh, 4th at 5 p.m. Eastern. So inshallah, after that, we will announce uh, the winners live. Speaking of which, I will be announcing uh, the winners from last week's uh, giveaway live now. It's actually this uh, beautiful calligraphy that I'm just going to... So I'm actually just going to uh, share the giveaway uh, for that beautiful calligraphy. Those who, uh, you know, si uh, entered the giveaway in the past couple of weeks, we have these four possible winners. So I'm going to click this wheel and we're going to find out who won that beautiful calligraphy piece from our previous giveaway. And it's Diana's stories. Mashallah, Diana's stories won that beautiful calligraphy. If you are watching, congratulations. Uh, if not, inshallah, we will reach out to her and uh, share uh, further information about how we will deliver the beautiful uh, calligraphy to her. And if you're interested in our next giveaway, you can go to celebratemercy.com slash giveaway to win this a really cool uh, Arabic learning uh, device. If you enjoyed our program, if you've been enjoying our programs, if you want to continue enjoying our programs, please consider uh, supporting Celebrate Mercy by giving a one-time or a monthly donation at uh, celebratemercy.com slash donate, inshallah. And a uh, final reminder that we are transitioning to Clubhouse now for our uh, post-Friday Gems reflection and discussion with uh, Imam Ahmad Deeb. If you don't have the app, by now, you can uh, go to your app store, download the app, uh, find Celebrate Mercy on there, and join our room now, inshallah. So I'll just be transitioning to the Clubhouse app now, and inshallah, uh, we will continue the conversation with Imam Ahmad Deep there. Hope you can all join us there, uh, but if you can't, inshallah, I'll see you all next week in next week's Friday Gems. Until then, I hope you all have a blessed Jum'ah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.